Chapter 8 Rob wanted to get there as fast as he could the second time around. He hated that his journey was starting all over, but that time there was no teary-eyed leaving behind of his friends and maybe his life. Things were even more crucial, and a newer, fear-filled anger was driving him forward with an unstoppable momentum. However, he did need and want to pull over at a motel and get some sleep and a decent bed. Not only did his body have to have it, but also he looked forward to the dreams. He wanted the information in them. He drove until his eyes burned so bad and would not even stay open on their own anymore. It would be a couple more hours till sunrise, but he could sleep with a lamp on. He took the next exit that came along. There were no streetlights after he turned off the freeway. The road disappeared into infinity on either side of the car. He didn't know if he should go right or left. He decided on right, since the left direction was associated with the sinister and strange. He was not in the mood for anything to come from left field. He was right-handed and had no such biases against left-handed individuals, but there was something somewhere in the back of his mind saying to go right. Rationally, it seemed silly, but in his gut, it felt right that he should go right. He did. He drove and shook his head several times trying to stay awake. There was nothing out there to go to. There were no gas stations or restaurants or even houses, just the trees lining both sides of the road. After an eternity, he finally came to a shopping center. It was closed. There was no one to ask for directions, so he kept driving until civilization began to appear off in the distance. He drove on toward the lights that shined through a light fog. Finally, he got to a gas station. He filled up again and hoped he had enough money for his travels. He had no idea how much longer they would go on. The cashier gave him directions to a hotel in the area called Casa de Vino and then bragged about it being a four-star place. Rob said that he couldn't really afford anything fancy. The cashier said it wasn't much more expensive than the crappy places that time of year. The wine-tasting season had ended for them, and they wouldn't be busy again until the holidays. Rob thanked him for the information. The cashier said he was happy to oblige, and welcomed him to wine country. Rob followed the simple directions the cashier had given him. Up ahead he saw the hotel. It was beautiful. It looked like it was several stories of sun-baked clay. It had stained glass windows on the first floor, and a bell tower on the side. It also looked cozy for a place that had such elegance. He checked in after ringing the bell to summon the desk clerk. She emerged with puffy eyes and unkempt hair, but a pleasant attitude. Rob apologized for the late hour. She said it was fine and gave him his key card for a room on the second floor. He paid in cash and didn't need to sign in. He went back to the car since it was parked close in the lot. He wanted a change of clothes. He had put a light jacket on to cover his wounded shoulder. The clerk hadn't noticed anything wrong with him. Still, his shirt was ruined, and his jeans were ripe from all the fear sweat. He took the suitcase out of the back seat and headed to his room. The number on the door matched the number on the key card. It was 207, and the number itself looked like rest to him. He knew it meant a much-needed break in all the extreme events. He didn't care if the killer tapped into him. He wanted to tap right back into him, too. It was time to get him out of L.A. and away from his friends. He slid the card, and the lock beeped, and the door popped open an inch. He found the light switch with his hand and then entered the room. It was posh. There was a dark wooden desk next to a king-sized bed with an overstuffed comforter covered in a finely stitched leafy pattern. There was a cabinet for the TV with drawers beneath it. There was a kitchen area with a small stove and oven and a microwave on a mini-fridge. The bathroom smelled like citrus and it sparkled a blinding white. There were normal-sized bars of soap along with many shampoo bottles and even some bath oils for the tub. The tub was not attached to the wall and had claw feet. Rob wanted to stay there forever. He was checked in until 11.30 the following morning, but that felt too soon already. When he opened the doors to the television, he wasn't surprised to find it was one of those new flat and widescreen ones. It was the size of the painting over the bed, which was rather large. Of course it was. He had found a momentary paradise for under a hundred bucks. He'd earned it. He realized that especially when he was preparing for a shower and stopped and got his first long look at himself in the full-length mirror on the back of the bathroom door. He was stunned in his exhaustion. No one had given him much of a look, either at the gas station or the hotel, because the real juicy-looking injuries were all hidden under his clothes. He had a mild cut across his nose, and his right eye was puffing underneath from a slight shiner. He didn't remember getting that. It must have been from when he was thrown into the entertainment center. His shoulder wound looked crispy at the edges. The skin around it looked like it was wilting. It really did need medical attention, that he would not be able to provide it, at least not professionally. He would go to a drugstore the next day and do all he could for it over the counter. His hair hid the tender lumps on the back of his scalp from getting his head slammed into the floor. His ears throbbed from being almost yanked off. His forearms were covered in bruises from the killer's knees pinning them down. 
The bruise on his ribs that he had gotten from the demon had begun to fade and turn a lighter yellow. It was the injury he kept going back to, though, lightly touching it with his fingertips. He accepted the reality of being violently attacked by the killer. Those wounds made sense. The bruise on his ribs was a lingering, tangible proof of what he still couldn't quite wrap his mind around. He could touch it and still feel a distant pain that was very real. He got in the shower after the water had warmed up and fogged over the mirror. He thought about taking an oil-scented bath. His legs were so tired that he didn't want to stand for too long, and those claw feet could support his weight for him. He was too exhausted to appreciate the luxury of such a thing then. The shower, although it would require him to stand, would be faster and maybe more sanitary than soaking his wounds in bath water. Also, at his level of fatigue, he didn't trust himself not to drift off or pass out and slip below the surface and drown. Shower water pooled in the shoulder wound, and he would turn to drain it out after the water would start to make it ache too much. He could barely even lift that arm anymore. He soaped his body with his good arm, which was only bruised on the inner forearm, and it only hurt when he made a fist. It was a bit of a struggle for him to unscrew the shampoo bottle top, but he wanted to get totally clean. He wanted to wash the day completely off of himself. He skipped the conditioner. It was becoming too much work, and he was clean. The conditioner was more for style and manageability, and such things were not concerning him. He stepped out onto the cool tile floor and gently towel-dried. He patted the wound and bruises dry with extra care. He opened the bathroom door, and all the steam rushed out into the rest of the room. Maybe it was the sudden change in temperature, or his lack of sleep, or he was going into shock, or it was all of those ingredients combined, but he was losing consciousness fast. All pain was leaving his body along with his mind. He was cold. There was a splotchy blackness around his field of vision, and it was closing in like a fade-out in an old movie. Before everything disappeared into the blackness and he collapsed right there on the floor, he dropped the towel and crawled to the bed. He fell into it and pulled the comforter over his naked and still water-beaded skin. The blackness took him over. All the lights were still on in the room. Rob had no sense of time where he was, but he had a feeling of speed. He had gotten where he wanted to be very quickly. He was not alone there. He was looking for him. He was tapped in, and he was aware of it. He hoped he would retain and retrieve the information, and that it would not fade away or not just come up when something jogged his memory. He needed all insight all the time. The killer was not awake. He understood that. He was in the gray, smoky limbo. Other people were in there, too, but they were not as close as they had been before. They were in the distance. They were irrelevant even to him. He waved his arms to part the haze. He wanted to see through it. He was not afraid. It was just a dream space. Reality was where all the danger was. He stomped through the fogginess, even though he could not see his own legs. He could feel them stomping onto some sort of ground, and oh, how they hurt. He didn't care. He ignored the pain and began running through all the mistiness. The faceless people in the distance stayed the same amount of space away, no matter how fast he ran to them. He figured he'd find the bastard in their mob. They were chattel for him. He didn't know if they were real people who were asleep somewhere in their beds, or if he was making them up, or if the killer was. He wondered if they woke up screaming when the killer got them. He would not wake up screaming no matter how it went down. All bets were off in there. Maybe he could summon super strength, or fly, or zap him into a puddle with beams he shot out of his eyes. Maybe he could beat the killer with those things in there, even if it had no effect on him when he woke. Moving through the haze was pointless. He was getting nowhere. He stopped then. He understood what to do. He felt his body clench, every muscle tighten, all his hair stood up, his eyes watered. He was spooked at his own sense of power and of what he was summoning. He saw the dry ice ruffling straight ahead. It was being disturbed and was parting as he got closer to him. He pulled at him with all his inner strength. He pulled him up out of the fog and hovered him in midair right in front of him. The killer thrashed helplessly in the clutches of his enemy. You, Rob said to him. Fucking little prick, the killer growled. I am going to beat you down, you worthless motherfucker. I won't let anything stop me next time. Next time, I'll see you dead. Head north for it. You better come for me because I am coming for you. The killer screamed his lion-like roar as Rob focused more and more of his energy. Rob screamed too as blood began to ooze out of pores all over his own body from the effort. He continued through it. The killer exploded into pieces that burst into smoke and instantly evaporated. The killer's scream still echoed. Rob heard thunder behind him. He turned and saw a horde of the demons coming for him. There were thousands of them, maybe a million. 
They were so small in the distance, but they were gaining. He was picked up from behind. One of them had snuck up and grabbed him by the back of his head. It turned his body to face it. Rob cried out with fear. No! It lunged into him. He felt a rush of pressure like rapidly being pushed up through deep water. When he hit the surface, he awoke. He heard his own scream fade away.